Now, some of the big debates that, that shape our land use and housing policy uh, work have to do with the changes that have happened over the last 10, maybe 15 years, which is not just unique to San Francisco, but I think is really, uh, if you will, exaggerated in San Francisco, which is a huge resurgence of interest in living in the city. I mean, this is the reversal of a trend in American history that, you know, for most of the 20th century, uh, folks were moving out of cities. They were living in the comforts of the middle class suburbs. And that had a very racial aspect to it, too, of course, you know, the white suburbs everybody talks about. Well, that, for I think for very good reasons, has reversed itself and increasingly is reversing itself. Now we have a trend where young folks and even, you know, middle class folks and middle age folks want to live in the cities. They're, they're kind of falling in love again with urbanism, um, which is certainly a new thing in American history. And in that kind of, uh, someone referred to it as almost like a tidal wave of folks wanting to move to San Francisco and other hot cities, we struggle with the social and economic implications of what that means. Uh, it happens at too fast of a pace. The amount of money that comes in tends to kind of overwhelm the working class and kind of poor neighborhoods that we have now. And government simply can't keep up, whether it's in terms of infrastructure or just in terms of making good policy that provides you know, opportunities for everyone. So what we end up with is this kind of class struggle and uh, for limited resources and limited space. And I think San Francisco, it's only 47 square miles, so it's a tiny little laboratory for this, this huge social tension, this kind of class tension of a lot of folks wanting to, you know, take advantage of this wonderful city, but bringing their kind of class privileges into that space and creating a lot of tension there's a lot of finger pointing that goes on. I mean, clearly without question, the growth of the tech sector, which has been facilitated and incentivized by public policy, is a big part of it. But I frankly think that it's, it's wrong to just blame techies. I mean, a lot of the young workforce who show up making good money and live, working in these companies, themselves aren't making decisions to somehow displace others or somehow to, to opportunize on their class privilege. But as an overall industry, what's happened is it has grown at a pace without a social responsibility to provide the infrastructure, to provide the housing, to even engage in social problem solving in a way that takes care of everyone and not just the corporate self-interest. And that's where I think we end up with a lot of battles over the impacts of tech. The other thing that's happened, of course, is that nationally we have growing income disparity. It's just, it's just a fact and it's not something we're going to solve in San Francisco. But when you have the amount of money that is available to some versus the shrinking amount of money available to others, I think you end up really having a struggle for people who are just simply everyday working class and low income San Franciscans. And, you know, I'm a big believer in big but effective government. And I think what we can do in San Francisco is we can show how we can redistribute wealth. And we've done that. A lot of the policies that have had the most meaningful impact, whether some folks don't like it or not, is when we actually insist that developers, corporations, uh, uh, big property pays for the needs of public goods and public services so we can keep San Francisco diverse. As far as I'm concerned, that's good policy and that's some of the best policy we've done and we need more of it.